question more and go behind the Iron Curtain USA. We have talked a lot about the uh, excitement uh, that the young people bring, the excitement we've had on the campuses. I asked, I asked somebody on the staff after uh, the last uh, uh, campaign event on a college campus, I said, how many, how many campuses did I go to? And let me tell you, if they had told me I was going to go to this number of campuses during the campaign, I would probably would have said, there's no way you could do that. We went to 33 college campuses. Talk to, talk to close to 150,000 young people, enthusiastic. Were they the conservative college campuses? Or were they the liberal college campuses? No, they were all the college, college campuses. They welcomed us. Now, when, when you think, if there's a party that says, well, we have an open tent. We want new people to come in. We want to appeal to the young people. Don't you think they would be begging and pleading that they come into the big tent? Well, well, no, well, we'll get into the tent, believe me, because we will become the tent eventually. Once they know we are the future, they will know about this. But the young people certainly have the en enthusiasm. And I think it's the enthusiasm that really energizes a campaign. It energizes not only themselves and the college campuses, and I've always maintained there will not be a true revolution unless the college campuses are alive and well with those ideas. But there has been so many times that the young people not only those of voting age, but sometimes 13 and 14 and 15, they bring their parents to the office and, and have them converted into believing and understanding about what liberty is all about. Young people energize a lot of other people and give the energy to the remnant who, believes, who are with us already. So this to me is exciting with the energy that we have. It seems to me that they would be begging and pleading for us to come into the party. You know, most people in this room probably have read that uh, book called 1984. It was required reading in high school uh, uh, for, for so many years. And, uh, you know, I figured it out. I can explain to you where the problem is. Uh, 1984 has been read by lot. I would assume everybody in this room read it as a dire warning of what could happen to a society if you're not careful. I think a bunch of people read the book and thought it was a business plan and they ran for Congress. Because so many claim they read it and uh, they, they claim that they understand this and yet they do the very things that we have been fighting against and trying, uh, trying to stop. During the campaign I got a lot of advice. Can you believe that? A lot of advice. I am convinced that we're living at a time that an era is ending, and this is significant because you can be depressed at times when you look at what's happened in Washington, you work hard, you come close to victories, you don't have real victories, and it goes on and on, you said, this is too overwhelming, and Washington is, uh, is responding uh, too, too slowly, but the end of an era provides an opportunity, and I'm thinking recently about what era are we talking about? And I would say first off, uh, in the last hundred years approximately, what about 1913? That was a begin that was a beginning of an era. That was that was a beginning of a time where they said, 
you know, with the income tax and a new foreign policy, we're going to have, we're going to make the world safe for democracy, and we're going to have a war to end all wars, and we're going to have a Federal Reserve that's going to get rid of the business cycle, on and on. This, they, we were going to introduce this wonderful era. Well, guess what? That era is not with us anymore. It's over and done with. We're just looking at the last vestiges of a bad program started in 1913. We will eventually get rid of the Federal Reserve. One of the, one of the books that impressed me when I was still in medical school was uh, Dr. Shivago. And I remember one line in there when Laura was talking to Chivago, and things were very, very bad during the revolution. And she says to uh, Chivago, what a terrible time to be alive. And she was absolutely right, anticipating just what was coming. But I think things are different now. I don't think we should be as depressed. We have more knowledge now than ever before. These conditions that have been developing for the past hundred years, and now we're in the midst of a, of a change, providing an opportunity for a revolution towards liberty, this has provided some very serious problems for us. It will not be smooth sailing, but there's reason to be optimistic that we can have great achievement. But to me, the three problems that we have to face, number one, that I see as the problem, that if we solved it, it probably would solve most of the other ones. And that is the attack on personal liberty. If people truly understood what personal liberty means, that you have self-ownership, that you have a natural God-given right to your life, therefore you have a right to your liberty, and we defend all life and all liberty regardless of our judgment about how people are using that liberty, then we would have the natural sequence of saying, if that is the case, you have a natural right to keep the fruits of your labor. And all of it. I want you all to know that I am a Dr. Paul fan. for my endorsement in 2008, I readily gave that endorsement. When I dropped out of the Republican primary, I asked everyone that was going to vote for me to vote for Ron Paul. When asked in the last debate that I got to appear in, who would you pair up with as a vice presidential candidate? I chose Ron Paul. There wasn't any other choice other than Ron Paul. And I want to make this really clear. If I thought Ron Paul was going to get the nomination, I would not be standing here before you today as the Libertarian Party candidate for president. I would have not done this. I would have let Ron Paul get the nomination, and I would be along with you supporting Dr. Paul right now. in your face and you continue to have the sand kicked in your face and you keep coming and we all keep coming because this is really an important message and it's about the message and Dr. Paul is the first one that will talk about the message and the message is look let's stop the spending let's end the wars by the Constitution of the United States. There is a growing police state in this country. Let's stop this growing police state in this country. Now going forward, it's really important to recognize that there are other third-party candidates, okay? It's not just the Libertarian Party. 
But the Libertarian Party is going to be on the ballot in all 50 states. And there are only going to be three candidates on the ballot in all 50 states. And this is really important to recognize. So when you talk about the three candidates that are going to be on the, in, the, in the general election come the fall, there are some really, really important distinctions here between the three. The Libertarian candidate for president is going to distinguish him or herself from the other two candidates. Right now, that candidate happens to be me, okay? And I recognize... Each and every one of you would be doing what I'm doing right now if given the opportunity, but I've been given this opportunity and I'm trying to make the most out of it. So in the general election, I'm going to talk about three candidates because only three candidates are going to be on the ballot in all 50 states, but I'm going to be the only candidate that wants to stop foreign aid where we have four people in this country giving foreign aid to rich people in other countries. I'm going to be the only candidate that does not want to bomb Iran. I'm going to be the only candidate who wants to get out of Afghanistan now, bring the troops home. by politicians that beat their chests against the terrorist threat and that comes at a cost of tens of thousands of innocent people being killed in foreign countries and it results in our men and service women coming back in body bags or with their limbs blown off. This has to stop and it has to stop now. Defense Authorization Act allowing for you and I as U.S. citizens to be arrested, detained, without being charged. This is why we fought wars. I'm going to be the only candidate that wants to end the drug wars. Legalize 